Welcome to Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, back again with another episode, y'all. In this episode, I'm going to talk about uh, this uh, Aryan Nation dude, this wannabe Aryan Nation dude that I knew that disowned his own biracial son to become a member, right? This is an example of how fear will make you do some things you would never believe that you would do before you come to prison, right? So with that said, I want you to lean back and enjoy the show, y'all. It's been some years ago, right? I was at this other institution right up in East Tennessee. And the camp was cool, you know what I'm saying? It, it, was, it wasn't what everybody made it out to be, right? Uh, it was, in my opinion, it was a, uh, an Aryan camp. But at the end of the day, you know, they stayed out of your way. They didn't bother you unless you brought it to them, right? But, you know, we had numbers, so we really weren't worried about that kind of stuff anyway. You bring it, you get it, you know what I mean? But there's this one dude, man, this is one black dude, I mean, this one white dude that I knew that he had a, a black girlfriend, right? And they had a son. And and we all knew that because, you know, they used to go to visit and, and uh, whatnot, and we would see them in the visit. He's playing with his son. His son was about three or four years old. He'd be playing with his son and, and all that, you know, just having a nice family visit, you know? And uh, so one day... The word started circulating around the compound that this white dude was trying to become an Aryan Nation member, right? And I was like, man, I don't believe that. There ain't no way he's going to do that. He's, he's got a black girlfriend and his son is mixed. You know what I'm saying? There's no way that they're going to even allow him to become a member. So I just dismissed all that, right? Because in here, you know, people say anything and just try to get something stirred up, you know, just to have something to talk about for the day, right? So, like I said, I quickly dismissed that, right? So, as we're rolling around the compound, this is like in the middle of the early, early part of the week. We're rolling around the compound. We start to see him hanging around these people. And when you're about to become a member, you got to start associating with the people that you're going to be uh, calling your brother later on. It doesn't matter what organization it is, whether it's GD, Vice Lord, Crip Blood, Every Nation, Brotherhood, whatever. You're going to start associating with them and spending more time with them. So I did notice that he was hanging around them a lot, hanging around them a lot. So I was like, wait a minute, is there any truth to this? And then I got to thinking, I'm like, well, they might not know that he's got a mixed son. They might not know that he's got a black girlfriend. And then I got to thinking about it now. They're too thorough with their background checks. You know, they, they dig into everything. And when you are trying to become a member of, a, of a, a white supremacist group, most of those organizations will put you on watch for up to a year, digging into all of your history, your past history, your background, your family, where you're from, what your case is, all of those types of things before they actually pull the trigger. It's a very thorough process with them. And they just don't allow uh, things like that to take place uh, haphazardly, let's put it that way, right? So anyway, we're chilling, and it's Wednesday, right? It's the middle of the week now, and uh, one of the guys that grew up with him in the neighborhood that he's from, now he's coming to us saying, man, bro, he's getting ready to become an Aryan nation. And, and these guys, they grew up with him, they know him so well, they call him bro. They kicked it. They played ball with him. Uh, grew up with him in the neighborhood. Ate at his mom's house. Spent the night at his mom's house and vice versa. He did, he did the same. He knows a lot of people in the black community. He grew up in the black community. He grew up in the black community. Right? Everybody knows. And his mom. I mean, his his mother even had, uh, I don't, at the time, I know she had a black boyfriend, but at the time of this going on, I don't know if she had one or not. You know, because... It was just well known. This this guy was well known in this area, from this area. You know what I mean? So anyway, the, the conversation is going all around the compound. So these brothers that know him from the town, 
they're getting angry. They want to do something to them. And I'm telling them, look, we can't get in there. That's not our business. What he wants to do with his life is his business. And now I know y'all are from the same hometown, from the same neighborhood. You feel what I'm saying? The projects that they all grew up in, I, I feel you. But we're not finna get in that. We're not finna get involved in no war with no Aryan Nation organization because y'all feeling some kind of way about this dude trying to uh, join an Aryan Nation organization, right? So at the end of the day, uh, one of the brothers, he calls home. And he tells his girlfriend that dude is in here on probation, what they call on watch, trying to join this Aryan Nation organization. So she tells the, the white dude's girlfriend. And when he calls home, they have it out on the phone. He's right there in the pod. Everybody can hear it. He's saying this and saying that and blah, 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 telling her that we'll talk about it when you come to visit this weekend. So just knowing that he said that, let me know it's something up with this. This has got to be about money, dope, or something else. This is not about him joining an Aryan Nation organization. It just can't be. It just can't be true. So here we go. The weekend comes. And we're all going to visit pretty much around the same time. And we're all in the trap together. And, and the white dude, he's in the trap. You know, and when I say the trap, I mean it's a, it's a set of doors that you got to stand in between before they let you through. We've already been patted down. Now we get in there and then we got to, they got to open up the inside door that leads to the visitation area, right? And then we all walk through. So we're standing there waiting. And, and one of the guys, he, he asked the white dude, he said, man, uh, you trying to become an every nation? Man, dude looked at him and stared at him and said, man, you mind your business, boy. I said, I think it's going to pop off right then and there. He said, man, I'm going to make sure you stand on that what you said when we get back from visit, right? So we all looking at it now like it is something to this. So we get out into the VG. We're all out in the VG. We're sitting around. And, you know, my gal, she's sitting there. And I tell her what's going on. And everybody's, like, not really focusing on they're busy, but they're watching him. Everybody's watching to see what he does. He sat down. He picked up his son. He hugged him and kissed him. I was like, oh, it ain't nothing. And then we start to notice the other Aryan Nation members that are at visit as well, visiting their families. All of a sudden, one of them tells him, you can hear him. They didn't even get up from the table. They tell him, do it now, Proby. That's what they call it, Proby. Do it now. So he stood up in the middle of the VG and told her, and I quote, I don't want to see your black ass again no more ever in life and don't bring this half-breed child up here to see me no more. You should have seen the brothers that grew up with him that know this girl, that know this little boy, they trying to get to him. The sergeant, he stops everything. Stops everything. Empties the VG out. Everybody out. Everybody out. Now, they separate the blacks from the whites. You know what I mean? Now, they're trying to get the visitors out of the VG. She's being escorted out of the VG. She's crying. The little boy's like, trying to hug the daddy. The daddy turns his back on him, man. Don't want nothing to do with him. She's crying. She picks up the little boy, and they're walking out. She don't know what to do. She don't know what to do. I could see it on her face. It was like she had been punched in the stomach. And the little boy is like, Daddy, he's hollering for his daddy. And I see him. He's looking at his son and his, and his, and his, and his well ex-girlfriend at that point. He's looking at him, and he wants to say something, but he don't dare say a word because the other every Nation dudes, they're looking at him, and they got grins on their faces like, yeah, he did that. And I'm saying to myself, oh, he finna get it. He finna get it. Soon we get back on this compound, these brothers that grew up with him, they finna beat him. And we're all in the same pod. 
So when we're walking across the compound going back to the pod, they letting them know. Soon as we get in here after this camp, man, you finna get it. He ain't say a word. He ain't say a word. It's like, I know he was scared, but the look he had on his face is like, I done already crossed the bridge now. It is what it is. Let it do what it do. It ain't no going back. It ain't no going back. You get in the pod, they lock everybody down. As soon as the count clear, they say, well, they're not letting us out right now. So they come into the pod uh, and unlock his door and get him and his cell and take him out. Take him to the hole. They put him in protective custody. He's in protective custody for about three days. And then they let him out. But when they let him out, they put him in a pod where it's nothing but Aryan Nation. And now can't nobody get to him. Can't nobody get to him. Unless he's willing to go to war. And I wasn't willing to go to war. Because once you pull the organizations into it, it's way more than it's way more than it's way more than about him disrespecting his sister and his son. It's about a whole lot of other things. A whole lot of other people are gonna get involved in a personal situation because none of us had any uh, ties to that. None of us had any uh, thing to do with that other than those brothers that knew him. They were pissed off that he treated their sister like that, and I get it. Felt all of that. But on the business level, we didn't have anything to do with that. And that's just a decision that, that I had to make. So after a few days, he's out on the compound and walking around. And uh, he's surrounded at all times by the Aryan Nation. They're deep. They're deep. But they catch him slipping one day. The guys catch him slipping. And I'm talking about when I say they beat him, they beat him. And this is what's weird about that. When they whooped him, the Aryan Nation didn't even help him. They ain't even help him. They let him get beat up like that and didn't do anything about it. They wanted to see what he was made of. And I'm talking about when these brothers beat him, they were stomping him, calling him a boy. You know what I'm saying? Calling him a white trash cracker. They was calling him all of that. You know what I'm saying? Beating him. And it dawned on me, you know, while they were beating him, this is what the Aryan Nation wants. Because the more the guys whoop on him, the more he has to lean on the every nation. If he had any uh, hesitation about being fully committed to that, it was gone now because there's no way he can come back, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? There's no way that he can come back. But at the end of the day, he went on with the move, disowned his own son and his girlfriend, embarrassed her in front of the whole visitation gallery. And it was the talk of the compound for the longest. Because at the end of the day, this man disowned his own son. And it came out. It came out months, months, months down the road that they had pressure on him. If he didn't join them, they were going to check him in. He didn't want to come to anybody black for help. Because at the end of the day, you know, he felt he had this reputation that he could hold his own. But he was scared of them because they, when they talked about killing him, they meant that. They meant that. And they threatened to do something to his, 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 his girlfriend and his son. So on one level, it was like I can understand maybe he did it to protect them. But then on the other level, I'm like, nah, I don't respect that. You don't disrespect the mother of your kids like that. You don't disrespect your child like that. But that's another example of what fear would do to you in here. I've seen many a guys join an organization because they were afraid of what could happen to them if they didn't. Just thought I'd drop that on y'all. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. And I say peace, y'all.